Hello, Alex here, and in this video, I want to share my review of the Zeiss Distagon T Star 50mm f2.8 f, a fast, wide angle, near macro lens for the 200 and 2000 series focal plane Hasselblad bodies. Let's get into it. This 50mm f2.8 is part of the F series of lenses designed by Zeiss for the Hasselblad 200 and 2000 series bodies which have an inbuilt focal plane shutter within the body themselves. So these lenses don't need to include a synchro comp or leaf shutter like a traditional standard Hasselblad lens within the lens themselves. And that frees up extra space that can either be used to alleviate some optical constraints in designing certain lens types or just introduce more elements or different optical designs that just make use of that extra space to take a great lens to another level. In most cases, the F-series lenses have one or more of the following. Higher image quality, a faster max aperture, or a closer minimum focusing distance than their C-series counterparts. There's also the subset, which is the FE-series lenses that include electronics for things like aperture priority mode on certain bodies, but I don't have one of those and that's not what I'm talking about. The lens comes in at about 100mm long and it extends by another 15mm when focusing closely and it's about 80mm wide most of the way down the barrel but it flares out right down the front to about 90mm wide. It weighs in at about 1.3 kilos or almost 3 pounds. Do you see why I call this thing Gigantor? This lens uses the standard Hasselblad V-mount, so although it will physically fit on any 500 series body, it won't work because then neither the body nor the lens actually have a shutter. This could lead to some trouble for some people, but it enables any of the 200 and 2000 series bodies to use every Hasselblad V-mount lens ever made, including focal plane and leaf shutter lenses, so that was a fair trade-off rather than using a proprietary mount for these systems. This is a prime lens, so it doesn't zoom, and it has a fixed focal length of 50mm. In field of view terms, the 35mm equivalent would be a 28mm lens if measured using the diagonal field of view, or it would be a square crop of a 21mm lens if you measure using the vertical field of view, which firmly places it into kind of ultra-wide angle lens territory, about what you'd expect from a 50mm lens on 6x6. The front of the lens has an 86mm filter thread, but that is not for attaching filters. No, no, no. That is to attach the lens hood, which itself takes 93mm filters. I don't own any filters that large, but I've read reports that even a single 86mm filter causes severe mechanical vignetting because the, fil the filter frame is just visible in the photographs, which is insane. The optical construction consists of nine elements in eight groups and it includes a floating element design that helps maintain and improve image quality when focusing very closely, like at the lens's ridiculous minimum focusing distance of just 32 centimeters. And bear in mind that's measured from the film plane, not from the front of the lens. That gives you a maximum magnification of 0.4x or a maximum reproduction ratio of 1 is to 2.5, nearly half life size macro in a wide angle 6x6 lens without bellows. The focusing ring turns about 350 degrees from infinity down to the minimum focusing distance and it turns it very smoothly with a good amount of resistance that will stop you knocking it accidentally but without being so tight that it's difficult to turn. And of course this is a manual focus lens with no option for autofocus. The last thing I want to say on that is that as you focus the front element unfortunately does rotate. The aperture range starts at that very impressive f2.8 and stops down to f22 in half stop increments. The aperture itself consists of five very interestingly shaped blades that give you a round aperture at wider settings, but stop down gives you a sharp pentagon which sometimes leads to 10 pointed sun stars, but they don't always appear and they aren't super prominent when they do, which I suppose most people would probably agree is for the best. The lens is multi-coated with the Zeiss T-Star coating as written beside that huge front element. The F and FE series lenses take on the overall design language of the CF and CFI lenses. So the body is made of high quality plastics and has the standard things you would expect from a CF lens. A printed EV scale, an EV lock button that's off by default, a printed depth of field scale rather than the old analog computers, that kind of thing. 
In this case, the EV lock button engages with the notched shutter speed selection dial around the lens mount because of course there's no shutter speed selection dial on these lenses. And the last thing I want to mention is that there is no infrared focusing mark on this lens. Image quality, in a word, is just stellar. There's no other word for it, really. There are no issues with spherical aberrations, chromatic aberrations, coma, distortion, or even focus shift at minimum focus distance. There's no focus shift. It's absolutely ridiculous. The lens is a bit softer in the corners and at the extreme edges at f2.8, but f4 sees it clear up quite a bit, and by f5.6, f8, it is sharp across the frame at any focusing distance. It's an extremely high-performing lens. Distortion is non-zero, but it's not severe, and I'd say it's very, very well controlled. There is one major flaw that can be worked around, but might be a deal breaker for some though, which I'll get into as my first major con. Just the fact that such a wide lens can focus so closely on a medium format system is very rare, and it's almost unheard of in a system that uses a helicoid rather than using bellows, because you can do whatever with bellows, that's kind of cheating. It gives you the opportunity to take on very creative, exaggerated and dynamic perspectives at a very close focus distance that you just can't do with a traditional medium format macro lens which is usually in the region of, what, like 120 millimeters. Having f2.8 as an option, even if you're not actively using it, means the viewfinders are extremely bright and very easy to focus with. And the focus fall off is quite sharp and obvious when you're using like a micro prism, which just makes it very easy to focus, even if you're shooting at f11. And of course, if you do want to shoot at f2.8, you're gonna be using this on an F-series body, which can shoot it up to one two thousandth of a second, meaning you can probably actually use that, you know, in daytime with slow enough film. It's probably fairly obvious, but I do want to say that the build quality is absolutely incredible. Tight tolerances, good materials, and a solid feel in the hand. It's exactly what you would expect from a Hasselblad lens. There is a lot of vignetting with this lens at f2.8 and quite a bit at f4. It does disappear as you stop down, but it is very severe at wider apertures, and it creeps quite far into the frame to the point where I would say it's less of an artistic Thing, focusing or drawing the viewer's attention to your subject, more of an actual distraction and problem. It's kind of crossed that line in my mind. Again, you can get rid of it by stopping down, but then if you don't want to have it in your images at wider apertures, you're gonna have to bring them up in post, which is a pain in the ass in the dark room. Or if you're working with scans, you're talking about increasing digital noise in your images and it, it's not a good performance. It's the one optical flaw that this lens has. In a sense, it almost makes me think that Zeiss should have made the lens bigger, which would have been hilarious, but maybe that was the constraint, that was what they had to compromise on to make the lens as relatively quote-unquote compact as it is. The lens is huge and heavy, and I didn't end up going out and shooting with it as much as I thought I would when I actually bought the lens. It's very easy to lose a sense of perspective when you see pictures online. You see the lens, okay, it's pretty big. All you read, it's pretty heavy. When you actually mount it to the camera and have to carry it around for a day, it is it's quite a lot to deal with and have to just lug around. It's not the kind of lens I bring with me unless I know or I'm going to use it or I'm planning to use it. You know, maybe I don't have a shot in mind, but I really want to go and get some use out of it. In terms of size and weight, it's a little bit smaller, but about the same weight as a 6x6 40mm lens. So if you've ever used one of these, that's the kind of ballpark we're talking about, and that's the kind of thing you're getting yourself into if you buy one of these lenses. Let's not beat around the bush. Filter support is terrible. The fact that the front element rotates as you focus means using a polarizer will be a pain in the ass. And just the fact that you need to use such a wide filter or filter system means it's gonna be extremely expensive. Like you probably can't use a 100 mil system with this lens. You probably need to use a 150 millimeter square filter system if you want to use more than one filter at a time. And that is gonna be such a drag and so ridiculously expensive. The fact that there's no infrared focusing index on this lens stands out as a bit of weird at first glance. My 110mm f2 planar does have an infrared focusing index, my voice is starting to go now, I'm sorry, 
but the it, this lens should need one if that needs one because a f shorter focal length requires greater compensation for infrared focusing than a longer focal length does. So the only thing I can think of is that Zeiss were actually basically admitting that yeah, you can't buy and never will be able to buy an infrared filter that fits this lens, so don't try. That's them basically saying this lens is not suitable for infrared photography, which is a major bummer. Oh, I spoke about this at length in a previous video, but the fact that this lens only stops down to f22 is a bit of an issue from time to time. f32 would have been a very nice addition. <laughs> Lastly, I will mention again that this lens is only compatible with the f-series 200 and 2000 series bodies, not the 500 series bodies. There are rare listings you see where someone is selling like a 501 cm with the F series 80 millimeter F 2.8 and someone is gonna buy that and not be able to take pictures just because those two things physically fit together. So there is the possibility of confusion and it's not just a made up thing. Like I've seen listings, it has happened. It's just something people need to be mindful of, I suppose, when researching a Hasselblad kit. So that's my review of the Zeiss Distagon T-Star 50mm f2.8 f Gigantor. This lens is a beast and you know that you're carrying it and your wallet knows that you bought it. But it gives truly tremendous image quality, bar the vignetting. And I think Zeiss did everything they set out to do with this lens and it's a good example of what the F-series lenses were able to do. It's faster, it focuses more closely and it's sharper than the C-series equivalent. That's exactly everything it was meant to do. And it just comes at the cost of strong vignetting at wider apertures and pretty crappy filter support. If you want something smaller and lighter and don't care about the F2.8 aperture or specifically don't care about the close focusing capability, the older Zeiss Distagon 50 millimeter F4 is a fantastic option because again, it's smaller and lighter, but also if you're not focusing at very close distances, say you're focusing at three meters away, 10 feet thereabouts, the difference between f2.8 and f4 is basically nothing. You know, this lens shines at um, closer focusing distances and if you're not taking advantage of that, the f4 of the other 50mm is probably good enough for you. If you want to do kind of architectural sweeping landscape stuff, for a field of view specifically, the SWC with the ground glass adapter might be a better option for you. Or if you want to get into perspective control for like really technical photography and architecture photography, something like the 40mm with the PC Mutar, which I think is actually slightly narrower because of the crop factor than this lens, or maybe something like the Hasselblad arc body or the flex body might be better options for you. But that's fairly niche compared to just getting a really, really good 50 millimeter lens for your Hasselblad camera. And if that's what you want and you have a body that it fits, yeah, easiest recommendation of any lens that I've ever given. That's all I have to say for this video because I could say a bit more, but I physically can't. So stay safe and bye bye for now. If you don't already, follow me on Instagram at Shaka1277 for new pictures every day. If you liked this video and enjoy what I do on the channel, please consider subscribing or checking out my Patreon where the tiers start at just one euro per month.